The Star Citizen PTU isn't in a good place right now, even after CitizenCon. There are a lot of flaws and issues that are still being worked out, and I've had really bad luck playing on the Persistent Universe for a few months now. As a result, I've started spending more time in Arena Commander, a smaller and more compact version of the game originally designed for testing and practice. Arena Commander offers a bunch of different modes, but one of the best is Classic Race. On the surface, it's not a complex mode, but it remains one of the most important in the game, since it acts as the most effective expression of the racing career currently available. There is a solid selection of tracks, derived mostly from the Stanton system, with a few that are currently unique to the mode. Each track has a unique character and strategy that emphasizes different strengths, which in turn play to the advantage of specific ships and flying styles. Compact, planetary tracks like the Snake Pit emphasize hard, blind turns that tamp down speeds and emphasize fine throttle control, while high orbital tracks like Miner's Lament provide long straights and broad sweeping turns that reward faster ships at the cost of enduring long, high-G pulls that will black you out if taken too quickly. All the racing ships remain usable on all the tracks, and there are several non-racing ships that are still competitive. The Arrow and the Gladius are no slouch on the Snake Pit, and in the right hands can lay down impressive lap times, though a dedicated racing ship will still have the advantage in a skills equal contest. In its current form, the mode itself doesn't account for ships of different classes or types. This means that a Cutlass can race a Hornet, a Herald can race a Razor, an Arrow can race a Fury, anyone with any ship can start a race, and everyone competes in a no-weapon sprint to the finish line. The mode implies that you have to win, and should pick a ship that will do it, and that tends to discourage people who don't currently have a racing ship. This is the wrong attitude. Racing can be about winning, and the competitive spirit should motivate you to press the limits of your current skill, but racing is about making yourself a better pilot. If you want to learn PvP, you need to understand how your ship behaves in atmosphere, in space, around corners, under boost, under duress, with a dozen different things happening. Racing won't teach you how to manage your weapons, but it will bake in muscle memory for the kinds of maneuvering you need to do before you ever fire a shot. It will expose weaknesses in your control maps, the limitations of your current controller set, issues with your graphical settings and frame rates. Most important, it will expose weaknesses in your own understanding of whatever you choose to fly. It will do this where your main competitor isn't the other racers. It's the environment, the physics model, and the clock. The three hostile forces that all pilots on the track have to navigate before they can worry about their competition. I'll be honest with you. The first hour will be an exercise in suffering, and it will all be self-inflicted. You are going to crash and burn, repeatedly, and there will be nobody to blame but yourself. The thing is, each time you do it, you will know what you did wrong, and what you can do to fix it. And as you watch bigger and slower ships get faster lap times, you will see the potential in your own ship and know that you can, in fact, do better. This mode is fun right now, and is simultaneously one of the easiest and most reliable to access. Because it runs in smaller environments with limited lobbies, you almost always get the best performance available on every server you connect to. You don't have to fly 30 minutes to Daymar, only to 30k on the descent from orbit. You can spawn directly on the start line, with up to 8 people. When you blow up and die, you won't wake up in a hospital bed on Microtech. You pop right back in your ship, on the turn you botched, seconds later, ready to go again. Want to master the arrow in PvP? Start by running around Miner's Lament where you can access most of its available performance in hard vacuum. Don't worry about what the other racers are doing, just focus on your lap times, and you'll learn quickly where the limits are and what kind of crazy maneuvers that you can get away with. 
Want to be the best cutlass pilot around? Take it for a spin around the snake pit. Give the veterans an extra hazard to navigate as you slide around tight turns belly first while still being faster than the new guy in his Aurora. You would be surprised what the game allows you to spawn on these tracks, and even more at what will fit inside the checkpoint gates. The Cutlass can even use its VTOL thrusters for some hard pulls around tight corners, which makes for great practice. While it's more of a party trick in racing, this maneuver is occasionally useful in PvP. Just be careful, since it makes your ship less responsive along other directions of movement. Star Citizen takes advantage of a hard physical model that is still being worked on, so the maneuvering and conditions of the different ships can, and have, changed over time. With each change, it's been necessary for players to learn and relearn the mechanics that underpin how their ships work. What you see in this video is the condition of racing as of the 3.21 patch. Depending on when you watch this video, ship handling and racing mechanics will be different. Master Modes, Maelstrom, Flight Surfaces, and their related component rebalances are going to alter the performance of each ship on a fundamental level. But you should not let that keep you from getting started, since there are principles that will remain consistent across these changes, and since racing is fun right now. The barriers to entry are low, and the potential for improvement is both high and measurable. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.